Hi, I'm Nicolene Peck, and I'm joined here with my son, Porter, and we are going to be talking about four basic skills that made an amazing teenager. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> talking about some real stories from Porter's life and we're going to talk about these four skills and how they have helped him become the young man that he is today. So Porter, what are some things that you see with maybe your peers, people your age, I know you're on sports teams, you work with different people your age, different school things that you're associated with. What are some of the struggles that you see them having that you wish they didn't have to have? Accepting no answers. One of the biggest ones I have seen uh, mm. is it's hard to do For, in situations, in certain sports things that I've been in. You lose a game. That's a big one. Ooh, what does it look like? They lose the game, which means they got a no answer. Then what? What do they do? They hit the ground. They sit on the ground. They cry it's really yeah. i know it's big boys yeah. crying they get yeah. moody yeah they, i've seen the moody they, they punch things off. everything it's, it's yeah. crazy but you don't because what goes through your mind well those through my mind it's just a game like yeah and there will be another one another so try more hopeful yeah i like and, and i've been taught by a good mother <laughs> to accept a no answer. Yeah, so you're like, it's just a no. It's just a no answer, no big deal. Because how many times growing up did you come to me about something and you're like, mom, and I'm like, oh, Porter, this is one of those no answers of life. Definitely, we're definitely have did to. that a lot. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to be talking about accepting no answers because that's definitely part of this video today. That's gonna be one of the skills that we're gonna mention. Um, but I wonder if there's other things like, I feel like young people, correct me if I'm wrong if you haven't seen this, but I've definitely seen it and parents have talked to me about it, that it seems like a lot of young people don't take responsibility. Oh yeah, for sure. That, yeah. That's what does a big that one. look like? They don't do anything around the house. They only do things that are they want to do. Mm. And even in their schoolwork, they just don't do it and... They, they kind care. of brag about it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've heard the, the bragging, well, I don't do it. I don't want to do it or whatever. And so they're not taking this personal responsibility, which means that they're kind of going nowhere. There's a lot of laziness too, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. Major laziness. I feel like at your work, you've mentioned that there's people who, I mean, obviously not naming any names, but that there's people who struggle with laziness. Yeah. Yeah, and what does that look like when they're in a work environment? What does it do to you and everybody else who's on shift with them? It It's hard. It's hard for me to take. I know it might be easier for them, but it really makes everyone have to pick up the slack. Mm -hmm. It makes everyone have to do more work, do their job, and it's just frustrating. Yeah, well, so because then you're like, oh, great, I've got to work with them, which means i got to do two jobs yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. instead of one job. And luckily, you have a good work ethic. We have a whole other video about that, so you can check that out. But yeah, Porter, people are struggling, but you haven't had the same types of struggles. And that's why I invited you to be here. I wanted to talk to you about four very simple skills that a person can learn, even when they're tiny, when they're two years old, which is when you were learning them, when you were a baby, but how those make a difference for your whole life. So we're not going to go into exactly what the skills are yet, but just tell us how has knowing these four basic skills changed you? It has made me such a calm, more calm person mm. and more confident mm. when knowing these skills. If I didn't have these skills, I would be the most defiant person. He's pretty strong-willed. He, he really... I would, <laughs> wouldn't want to do anything for anybody but myself. Yeah, that's true. Especially because that's the narrative that the young people have, right? Porter, we're going to talk about the four skills and we're going to go into some detail. But before we do, we got to give these people a message. They should do what? Subscribe. Subscribe. Why do they want to subscribe? Get more information. More information. There is so much more information on this channel. You are not going to want to miss it. Hit that subscribe button now. So Porter, we are going to show them a special book. Do, 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 do. Here's the book. It's called Porter Earns a Quarter. And if you see this book here, he's got a little calic. And look at this. 
look at this. He's yeah, got a yeah. little calic. He's like, oh, mom, you're doing it. You're talking about my calic. Anyway, so all of these books that teach the four basic skills are named after my children. This one is Porter, and it's about what skill? Accepting no answers. Accepting no answers. So you can learn the skill when you're real, really little. In fact, I know that many parents can't wait to teach their toddlers to say okay instead of to say no. <laughs> so accepting no answers is vital. It helps us with all the boundary lines. It helps us when we lose a game. It helps us when we have to do something we don't want to do. We just say, well, I've got to accept that no answer, right? Yep. That's what it is. And so we accept a lot of the things in our life that we just can't change. And we learn to drop the subject. So let's talk about the four steps to accepting a no answer. So Porter, what are the four steps to accepting a no answer? Look at the person with a calm face, voice, and body. Say okay or ask to disagree appropriately and then drop the subject. Drop the subject. What do you think is the hardest step of all of those? Dropping the subject. Drop the subject? Yes. Okay. Porter says drop the subject the hardest. Why? Because you just have to let it go. Forget about it. It's hard. If you yeah. want it, it's hard. And Porter likes things just so. He does. He's a detail-oriented person. He likes to organize things and make them perfect. Like if he does his job, he, his jobs, he likes them perfect perfect. And so that means that you like to focus in on something a lot, right? But there's a point where no amount of focus is going to fix your problem and you have to recognize it's going to hurt you if you keep focusing too hard, right? So that's when you have to drop the subject, let it go, no attitude, no stewing over it again and again. Okay, super good. Let's talk about our next skill. So Porter, what are you holding there? Well, here, I got here a book, London LeRae Says Okay. London LeRae Says Okay, and this is about your best buddy. Who? Yep, it's about London. London, his sister that's just a little bit older than him. And what does this book teach? Which skill? Following instructions. Following instructions. Let's talk about that. So, Porter, share with us the steps of following instruction, and then we'll talk about why this is such an important skill. Steps are look at the person with a calm face, voice, and body, say okay or ask to disagree appropriately, do the task immediately, and then check back. Yeah, and why is this skill so important? It gets things done. It helps everyone work more in unison without struggles, without power struggles. Mm -hmm. It's huge. So it, what it does for the family relationships is actually more than you might imagine. A lot of people think, oh, it's just about the clean room. It's not really about the clean room mm -mm. because that first step is to look at the person. When we're looking at the person keeping calm and being able to discuss the things that need to happen with each other, that actually improves our bond and our connection with yeah. each other. And, and it makes it so we don't have to have problems. Think of how many people have tantrums or attitude problems, whining, just over having to do a simple task. It's a waste of yeah. time. We don't have to spend our time handling a whole bunch of misbehavior over people not pulling their weight around the house because we just know how to follow instructions. Saves time. Now we can talk about the things that are the most important. So this book here teaches another skill, the skill disagreeing appropriately. In fact, all of the other three skills, there's always this option where you can disagree appropriately. And that's what we teach in this book, Paige Takes the Stage. So this is big sister Paige, right? Let's talk about what this skill does for us. I would say you would probably consider this your favorite skill, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about why. Why is this your favorite skill? It gives you a point of view. It gets your voice out there with in a calm way and you don't, so you don't have to yell or raise your voice at anyone around you. Yeah. So you're understood, but you feel like you were able to maintain control of yourself. You feel more powerful than if you're just Ah, to, yeah. you know, getting angry at somebody all the time, right? So should we talk about the steps? Today? Yeah, you got it. What okay. are the skills? <laughs> okay, let's talk about the steps. So the steps are that you look at the person, you keep a calm face, voice, and body, you say that you understand the other person's point of view, then you share your point of view, you listen to what they have to say, you say, okay, and then you drop the subject. And this skill can be used for anybody. So have you ever used disagree appropriately with anyone outside of the family? Maybe they didn't even know you were like using a skill, but you did use a skill, so when? All the time, on my soccer team, at work, with my managers, all the time. I don't particularly agree with something or I have a problem with something and instead of just going and blowing up in their face 
you go and disagree appropriately, and everything goes a lot smoother. Awesome. So Porter, we're going to have a whole other video where we role play these skills for people so that they can see them in action. But for now, just know you can use it in any scenario. Porter, are you ready for the final skill? Okay, so here is the fourth of the four basic skills and it is dun dun dun, dun accepting consequences. If a person does not get the opportunity to accept a consequence, they cannot learn self-government because then everything that happens to them will always be somebody else's fault. Porter, I'm guessing that your age, you probably know young people who if something happens, they blame somebody else all the time. Yep. Don't all the time. All the time. Yeah, this is a very common thing. People not taking personal responsibility. And the reason why is because they don't know how to accept consequences, whether they're natural consequences or artificial consequences. So in our family, we oftentimes use an extra chore because it's fast and because work is the antidote for a sick character. But we can also talk about natural consequences. Now that you're older, we spend a lot of time saying, oh, Porter, this is what happened. Like, it's probably not good because of this. Here's the natural consequence. What you should have done was this. And we explain those natural consequences to you. So I think that it would be good for people to understand why you're okay with this skill. Because there's a lot of people, there's a lot of young people who are not okay accepting consequences like Quinn does in this big win for Quinn book. So Porter, tell everybody how come you're okay with it. Accepting consequences is the best way to learn, especially natural consequences. If it's a natural consequence, it's something you did on your own, say you didn't finish your homework, then you can't go to your friend's house because you have homework to do. That's that's the best way to learn, at least in my opinion, mm -hmm. because then it teaches you that you better get your homework done instead of procrastinate and do whatever you were doing. Yeah, good point. I love how you just said that it's the best way to learn. So the whole point of the teaching self-government system or way of communication and problem solving as a family is to make sure there's a focus on cause and effect. And so what you're saying is because you were corrected all the time and because you also recognize natural consequences because you've been at this for a while, that you actually see yourself learning and growing and not making the same mistakes again and again. This is huge, really enorm enormous actually. If you have liked this video, I know that you will love the next video, which is role playing the four basic skills of self-government. Join me and Porter as we role play these skills for you next.